Welcome back for another video. Before we begin this video though, I just want to let y'all know, Barrio Tales hoodies are now available. Red, black, purple, orange, and blue. Cash App and PayPal how you can reach me. They're only $25 with free shipping. Don't just look at it, wear it. T-shirts are also available still. All you gotta do is hit that Cash App and PayPal that you see right there. Thank you. Welcome back for another video. Today's video will be about a particular crime that occurred in 2014 in Pomona, California, involving two men who are cousins. However, the cousins are from rival gangs whose hoods beef with each other. The two men and cousins are Sergio Ignacio Vidrio, nicknamed Little Bandit, and Oscar Lopez, nicknamed Goofy. Sergio is from the 12th Street Sharkies gang. Sergio's cousin Oscar is from Pomona Sur Lacotes. It is not uncommon to have family members from rival gangs. Thus, Lopez and Vidrio belong to rival gangs. Nevertheless, it was acceptable for them to hang out together because they were cousins. Deceased victim Nestor Miranda was an associate of Pomona Rebel Empire, a clique of Eastside Pomona. His moniker was Maito. Eastside Pomona is a rival to both 12th Street and Pomona Sir Lacotes, which can get complicated sometimes. The crime with Sergio and Oscar went down like this. On October 29, 2014, victims Noah Valas and Nestor Miranda were co-workers, neighbors, and longtime friends. Avalos usually drove Miranda to and from work. On October 29, 2014, victims Noah Valas and Nestor Miranda were co-workers, neighbors, and longtime friends. Avalos usually drove Miranda to and from work. On October 29, 2014, they left work at 4.30 p.m. When they turned onto their street, Avalos saw a great Nissan Altima coming in the opposite direction. The front windows were rolled down. Avalos could see both the driver and the passenger. They were both male. The passenger had a bandana up over his lower face. They had tattoos all over their faces. The driver's tattoos included a kiss on his neck, and the passenger's included two lines tattooed across his nose. Avalos realized that they had Pomona signs and were gangbangers. As they went by, they stared at Avalos. He made a U-turn and started to park. Meanwhile, the other car also made a U-turn. It came back and pulled up right next to Avalos. Avalos's window was partly open. The men in the other car asked, Where are you from? Avalos did not respond because he was not from nowhere. Miranda said something, but as he did so, both men pulled out guns and fired. One of them had a 9mm and the other had a revolver. Both guns were silver. Avalos heard 9 shots. The men then took off. A neighbor heard the shots then saw a gray Nissan Altima speeding away. Avalos' car was hit by some five to seven bullets. Miranda was hit in the head. As a result, he died at the scene. Avalos suffered only a grazed wound to his hip. The day after the shooting, the police received a report that two suspects in a car matching descriptions from the shooting were at a Super 8 motel in Ontario. Shortly after, officers arrived. They saw Lopez and Vidrio walk out of a room on the second floor. They ordered them to stop. Vidrio stopped, but Lopez kept walking. He disappeared down a hallway, then came back out. As he did so, one officer heard what sounded like guns being dropped. The officers then arrested both men. In a nearby trash can, they found two handguns, a stainless steel Smith & Wesson 9mm semi-automatic and a chrome Smith & Wesson 357 caliber revolver. Since October 26, Lopez had been driving his girlfriend's gray Nissan Altima. It was parked at the motel and Lopez had the keys. The police found two 9mm shell casings near the victim's car. They had both been fired by the semi-automatic. The police had recovered. A bullet fragment recovered from the victim's car had also been fired from the semi-automatic. Another bullet recovered from the victim's car was too damaged to be matched to any particular gun. However, it had rifling marks that were consistent with both the Smith & Wessons. It was consistent with the revolver style bullet. It was most likely either a 357 Magnum or a 38 Special. 
At trial, Avalos identified the driver as Lopez and the passenger as Vidrio. Cell phone records showed that when Lopez was arrested, he had two cell phones, a Samsung and an LG. The Samsung belonged to Lopez based on cell phone tower data. On the date of the shooting, it was in Pomona at 4 o'clock, 5.25, 5.26, and 8.10 p.m. At 8.20 p.m., 9.35 p.m., and 3.19 a.m., it was in Ontario near the Super 8. Within two days after the shooting, the Samsung searched the Inland Valley Daily Bulletin website or searched for Montclair News 120 times. The LG belonged to Lopez's girlfriend in the two days before the shooting. However, Lopez sent and received texts on it based on GPS data from the LG on the day of the shooting at 4.48 p.m. It was 0.4 miles away from the crime scene. At 5.06 p.m., it was 0.3 of a mile away. At 8.49 p.m., it was at the Super 8 on October 28 after the shooting. The LG searched the Inland Valley Dalyton Bulletin website five times. It had never searched that website before. Sergio Ignacio Vidrio was sentenced to 200 years to life in prison. Oscar Lopez was sentenced to 151 years to life in prison.